Well, as you can see from that little video that just, just came on, we're starting a new series in our book, in our look through 1 Corinthians, and it's called Crossing Cultures. And I want to be able to talk uh, for the next several weeks on the subject of culture and how the cross of Jesus Christ intersects into culture. So we're going to be looking at that and talking about that. But of course, today's a unique day. It's our first service where we're just completely online in your homes. I'm thankful for this. These are unprecedented times. We're going to talk some about that. In fact, uh, our message for today is the coronavirus and Corinth. And if you've never been at our church yet and you're watching this, you might think, what in the world is he talking about? But if you've been a part of the church, you'll know that we've been going through the letter of the 1 Corinthians that Paul wrote. And the city of Corinth was this really unique city in the Roman Empire because it's a place where it's on an it's a isthmus, it's meaning it's a very small strip of land covered and surrounded by water. And we've been talking about at church how that Corinth, when, when people wanted to move the goods of the world from the south or from the east, when they wanted to move it into the Greek, you know, the rest of the Greek world, they had to go via Corinth. The problem was is to go by ship was incredibly dangerous. And so they just, they just kind of came up with a different way. And what, so what they did is they, they took the boats and they would drag them, I mean, literally drag them across the land. It's such a small strip of land that it was easier to do that than it was to go all the way around. And, and this was done boat after boat, even ship after ship. And, and if, the, if the boat was too heavy, they would take the supplies off and drag that across and then drag the boat across. I mean, year after decade, it just kept going. In fact, it's still there today. And this whole area became known as the dragging. And, and really, I was thinking about that, and I thought, gosh, what a kind of just so appropriate when we think about um, the city of Corinth and when we think about our world today, right now. Not only were all the goods of the world dragged through the city of Corinth, all the good of the world was dragged through the city of Corinth, and all the bad of the world was dragged through the city of Corinth. The, the, the morality of the world or the immorality of the world, the wealth of the world, the issues of the world, the religions of the world, everything was dragged across the city of Corinth. And it had an impact on the church. Some of that impact was good. Some of that impact was negative. Some of the positive things that we could say about the church in Corinth was that they were a, a church that was full of knowledge, information. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. They knew, they, you know, they were worldly wise, and there's nothing wrong with that. Some of the negatives that came with being a part of the church in Corinth, this dragging, if you would, of the whole world through the, through the church was, it was a church that wrestled with morality. It was a church that wrestled with authority. It was a church that wrestled, wrestled with issues that maybe they should have known, but they were so confused because the world you know, the world system kind of got into their heads. And so the coronavirus and Corinth, how am I making a comparison? Well, I'd suggest to you that the whole world is kind of like a Corinth today. You really can't live anywhere in the world and not have the rest of the world being dragged across, excuse me, across your life. I mean, if it's not through the internet or through social media, we have access to so much so much information, so much, you know, to-do videos, manuals. If you want to see somebody, you want to learn how to tie a tie, there's five million videos to teach you how to do that today. And you know what? The truth is, is a lot of that is amazing. It's great. There's nothing wrong with that. We, as a church, as God's people, we've picked up a lot of the things of the world. Some of that has been good, and some of that has been not so good. And today, right now, you're in your home or maybe in a friend or family member's home watching a service because the whole world has been impacted by this virus, the coronavirus. And it's a tremendous, tre I mean, it's, a, it's unprecedented. In fact, you could start using all these superlatives, unprecedented, historical, unimaginable. It's, it's incredible. But I would want to just take a moment and remind you that with all the superlatives in the world, God is still bigger 
God is still stronger, and maybe most important, God is on the throne. You know, in all the fears that we're wrestling with, you know, should I go out? What if this person has it? Oh no, you know, all these things, and they're very real. At the same time, we have to remind ourselves, God is still on the throne. And if you're watching this, and maybe, maybe you've been sick, or you deal with a terminal illness, or maybe you feel like, gosh, I'm at an age where this could be risky for me. We want you to know we love you, but God loves you. And if you think about it, just think of the technology we're using right now. Man, this is an expression of God's love to you. He's made a way for us to have church on so many different platforms and, and capacities. And so we're thankful that you would be here. And if I could say one thing about this to you Christians that are watching this, Calvary San Diego, I would say this. We need to learn to live to be loved and to love. Let me say it again. We should live to be loved and to love. In the days right now when everybody's feeling this need to be self-preserving, let's also make sure that we're loving God and loving our neighbor as ourself. And I think that this is a tremendous moment in history, a tremendous moment in our community where we get to love our neighbor as we would want to be loved. Gosh, it's not real hard to do today. Offering to, hey, it might just be that you've got extra toilet paper for people who need it right now. You could be a blessing to your neighbors. Look for ways not only to be loved, but also to love. Well, with that said, I want to pray one more time before we get into, I just want to read a few verses, but our president has called a day of prayer today, March 15th, and so I want to take a moment, and we want to pray. We want to pray for our nation. We want to pray for the world. We want to pray for those who are suffering, known and maybe unknown. There's a lot of people who are hurting right now, even though they don't have the virus, but there's fears, and those are real and valid fears. We acknowledge that, but we believe in a God who's bigger than our fears. And so on this day of prayer, let's pray, and then we will look at 1 Corinthians chapter 8. So Father, we just acknowledge that we're living in unique, unique time in history. The whole world, Lord, is, is paying attention right now. And I believe, God, that, that you bring beauty from ashes, as your word says. Lord, I don't know what it would look like in everyone's life, but I do pray, God, that you would reach into every home and into every heart and you would bring the comfort of your presence I pray, God, that it, while we are socially distancing ourselves from people, <laughs> that we would not allow ourselves to become distant from you. I pray, God, that you would touch those who are sick. We pray for those who have been put in authority over our lives, government, leaders. We ask, God, that you give them wisdom, Lord, in how to address the problems that we're all facing. Lord, I thank you that your word tells us that you would not quench even the weakest among us, but that you're for every single one of us, God. The truth is, is Lord, whether we realize it right now or not, we are not in control. We've lost a perceived idea of control. And in this moment, God, we acknowledge, Lord, our need for you. Touch people, Lord. Those who are, are hurting because of work, I pray that you would touch them, God. We pray for people who are, who are uh, you know, not sure what to do with their kids as they have to continue to work, but their kids don't have school. God, make provision for each person. Lord, we, we commit all of these things to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, as I said earlier, the message is called the coronavirus and Corinth. And I want to read three verses to you in chapter 8 of 1 Corinthians, verses 1 through 3. Beginning in verse 1, Paul says these things. Concerning things offered to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. And if anyone thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. Verse 3, but if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. I, I should have said this probably at the very beginning, but listen, uh, we're going to be putting up more content. In fact, right at this moment, on our app, 
You can make sure that your kids have access to our, our kids' ministry Sunday morning. Great opportunity for your kids to get some interaction. And after we're both done, let's come together and talk about it and pray over that. That's an important part of our Sunday service. If we can't do that as a church together, make sure that you're doing that as the church at home. And also, be looking forward to the, the coming days. We're going to be putting out more content. In fact, the reason I'm saying that right now is because this first verse, Paul says this, concerning things offered to idols. I'd like to put a pause on that and just tell you, Monday night, we're going to be putting out another uh, little bit of a message, and I'll, I'll be addressing that subject a little bit more. That'll be more uh, relevant to what we've been doing on our Sunday mornings. But today, we wanted to take special attention to the second part of that verse in verses two and three, when Paul says, and he speaks about knowledge, and he speaks about love. Knowledge and love. And he says this, knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. Knowledge and love both have an effect on our lives. They can both have an impact on the growth that happens in our lives. And so again, let me remind you what Paul says. Paul says knowledge puffs up and love now, the word that we use in English is edifies. Some of your translations might say it like this. Love builds up. Knowledge puffs up. Love builds up. It's important to say here that Paul is not against knowledge. In fact, we're going to look at this, but I, I should remind you, Paul was an educated man. Paul loved education. Paul, Paul wrote these letters from a very high perspective. This was a smart man who encouraged us to use our minds to know and to understand the heart and the will of God. So this is not an issue of Paul saying, knowledge is irrelevant, you don't need to know anything, just love God. That's not what Paul's saying here. And in just a moment, I'm going to connect this to this tremendous issue that we are wrestling with today, the coronavirus. So stay with me on that. Knowledge puffs up. In fact, let me read this verse to you from Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6. We read this, The Lord gives wisdom, from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. I want to just remind you, knowledge isn't the problem. Knowledge is not bad. But what Paul's addressing is something else. The Christians in Corinth believed that they were more spiritual than other people. They believed that because they knew more, they were better Christians. Oh, if you knew what we knew, you would be better off. That was the Corinthian mindset. In fact, they went so far as to believe that Paul was kind of under them because they believed that they knew more than Paul. And so their knowledge, rather than it encouraging them in the things of God, knowledge puffed them up. It, it, it swelled them up. You know, uh, I, just every time I think of that, knowledge puffs up. I mean, maybe it's just me. Maybe you've been thinking the same thing. But I always think about those puffer fish that, you know, whoom, they just get puffed up. But he says love builds up. Just see the difference. See the difference of somebody who's got that chest out that's trying to hold it all in. Love, you know, knowledge puffs up. But then Paul says, but you know what? Love, love will build you up. Love can take something that is broken and rebuild. Love takes what is isolated and alone and heals. Knowledge used in the wrong way, it just makes us think more of ourselves than we ought to. Love will always build up. Knowledge quite often will just puff you up. And Paul says this, if you think you know anything, really you know nothing at all. Again, Paul is not saying that knowledge is useless, but he's saying be careful that if you think that what you know is what's most important, you might be wrong. While the Corinthians were so concerned with what they thought they knew, Paul says what matters is not what you know, but that God knows you. You're so busy, he was saying to the Corinthians, wanting to know this or know that, but really what's going to matter that when the day comes when you and I stand before God, it's not going to matter how much you knew. What's going to matter is, did God know you? And Paul warns the Corinthians that their obsession with information was hindering them from a true, 
healthy relationship with God. See, the Bible was written in such a way that the smartest among us and the, the most simple among us can know God. God will speak to your intellect. God will speak to your simplicity. In fact, I shouldn't do it like this. It's more like you might say, I'm more simple. God speaks to us in our simplicities. Maybe some of you have, are, are, are more intelligent. God will speak to you on that level. But here's the thing. When we let what we know, our knowledge, get in the way, it might become a hindrance to us just loving and knowing God and letting him know us. One of the big problems the Corinthian Christians had was their obsession with information. Now, I know March 15th, 2020, that's not the way it is in the world, right? Wrong. We are information obsessed. In fact, I think that we see this as clear as ever right now as we are all obsessed with information regarding the coronavirus. We are just overwhelmed. In fact, on the screen right now is this great little meme, and I think it sums it all up. One moment we're all scholars in one thing on social media, and now we're on to a virus, so we're all, scholar, you know, we're all scientists that know the most. And, and we're in this craze. We're in this craze right now where everybody's trying to be the first to tell the rest of the world new information. It's out there for everyone, and yet we're all trying. I mean, we are just knowledge crazed. We're knowledge obsessed. The internet is filled with experts. I don't know about you, but I'm seriously exhausted by all of the experts. It's overwhelming, and I have to say, more information that I've gotten, I'll use the coronavirus, because it's just so relevant to every single one of us. It hasn't made me feel better. It's made me feel worse. Yeah, I'm, more, I'm more anxious than I've ever been. I'm more concerned than ever. The knowledge that I am receiving is not bringing peace. And you might say, well, but the world doesn't have any peace. We're in, it's chaos. It's terror. I agree with you. I think things are unprecedented. But I also believe in a God who is in control of everything. And I believe that the God of the Bible not only loves me, but he loves you. And he has a plan for God knew what was going to be happening in the days that we're living right now. God knew these things. In fact, it seems that we're so focused on, 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 on information that quite often we are, we're, we're putting what we know about God kind of behind us. When I think now is the time when we need to put who the Lord is, what the scriptures say about God, about his love for humanity, about God's plan for the world, we need to put that front and center Maybe it's time, and I'm thankful that you would take time out of your day to pause from the coronavirus craze of information and to give some time to seek in the Lord. Paul said that knowledge puffs up, but love edifies, love builds up. I'm aware of people fighting the coronavirus right now in parts of the world that I, I didn't even know that that was a place. I mean, we are so aware of things on a global scale like we've never been ever before. And I got to tell you, as much as it's wonderful to have information, I realize a deficiency in me, and I think it exists in all of us, humanity, is that our capacity to emotionally handle all that information is less than our ability to watch the information. Let me say that again. I'm capable of seeing things, but I'm not as capable of processing that in a healthy and in a whole way. As a result, the, more, the, the information that I have is not bringing me peace, it's bringing me more fear. It's not bringing me calm, it's creating more chaos. You see, God made us in such a way that we are meant to be dependent upon him. But as we turn our dependence from the Lord, to just more information, guess what? We become kind of guilty of the same Corinthian problem, you could say. They were so obsessed with information, but they didn't know how to process that in the things of the Lord. The reality is this, is that knowing the coronavirus is not gonna bring me peace right now. It's good to have wisdom. You know, I love all the information going out to help us to be smart, to care about others in the way that is best for them right now. But when I just stop and I think of my own soul, when you stop and you think of your own soul right now, 
you have to acknowledge, we need the Lord to bring his peace into our lives. We need to live to be loved and also to love. As the world increases in knowledge, we cannot forsake the importance of love. That same God that loves me loves you, and I can prove that to you. He died on a cross for you. And listen, you might, you might say, oh, I've been a Christian for 50 years and I know this story. I'm so thankful for that. One, not everybody knows this story. But two, it's a, such a good way for us to finish our Sunday service together, being reminded of the love of God. Let me remind you that 2,000 years ago, God became a man, Jesus, and he lived among us and he taught and he gathered people together and he showed us what love looks like. But ultimately, he revealed love, the Bible tells us, by dying on a cross. He died for you. He died to give you freedom from fear. Now listen, is it wrong to be afraid? It's not wrong to be afraid. Many people, many of us are are scared, but there's something greater than my fears. It's the love of God. And if you will let God love you, I, I promise you, what information has not done for you right now God's calm, God's peace, and God's love can do for you in your life. You know, it's an interesting time because I was thinking about the the fact that we, you know, it's easy for me to say, hey, God loves you and just trust the Lord, you know, and some of you are going to probably be thinking to yourself, well, if, if God loves me so much, then why didn't he just not let this virus happen? Why didn't God just stop this whole thing? Why did God allow this if he could have just stopped these things from happening? And those are great questions. And I'll finish just with this kind of a thought when we talk about the love of God. You know, if you're a parent, then you probably know what I'm talking about when I say this. Imagine that your kid, you know, comes to you and says, hey, you know, you didn't make my favorite dinner tonight. Don't you love me? You made me clean my room. Don't you love me? Why do I have to take a shower? Don't you love me? What if your kids were every day of their lives pressing you on whether you loved them or not based on how you responded in that moment, you would probably say, hey, can I remind you that before before you were even you, I've loved you. When you were in your mommy's belly, I loved you. When you had a fever at night, I loved you. When you wouldn't sleep through the night, I was the one walking and carrying you, I loved you. I've always been loving you. You see, as a parent, you would say to your kid who is saying, why don't you love me with what you're doing right now? You would say, listen, you might not see my love in this instance, but that doesn't mean I haven't been loving you. And friends, I just want to finish by the reminder. We might look at the situation that's going on right now and say, if, if God loves me, why is he letting all these things happen? But don't let this one moment Blind your vision from the deeper reality. God has already shown you that he loves you. He died on a cross for you. Why are these things happening today? I don't exactly know. But I do know that God is for you and he is with you right there in your home. That's where church is happening right now. God is with you. Let him into your life in a deeper way than you ever have before. Listen, this has all been going online we, we know that, you know, it, we don't have the ability to be there in person and to say we love you and God loves you and to pray for you. But if you need prayer, hit us up on social media. Hit us up on an email. Send a DM. Whatever you got to do, let us know how to pray for you. If you're in need of assistance, let us know how we could help you. We love you. God loves you. Have a great rest of your week. Be looking on the app because we're going to be putting out a lot of great content coming up. Have a great week. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching our service online. Moving forward at this season, we want to remember these things as a church. We want to remember to be faithful in prayer. Let's pray for those that are sick, for those that are at risk, for our government, and for God to just change things. Number two, let us remember to be faithful in service. As Christians, let's lead by serving one another. And finally, let's be faithful in generosity. At these times, we can kind of look inward, living life close-handed. But let's go ahead and look outward and live life open-handed as Christians, helping one another. If you'd like to give to this church, you can do that at calvarysd.com give, or you can do that by giving on our Calvary SD app. 
for a time we might not be able to gather at church together on Sunday morning, but we can have church anywhere and we're going to have church online. So be checking out our online services every Sunday morning and be looking on Instagram, Facebook, and our Calvary SD app for more content during the week. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you soon.